Hello, this is Mike. Social media is about adopting a conversational mode of business. And in this screencast, I want to think about how we do that in a strategic manner, um, why this is a slightly different business model to the ones we're used to in the past, and most importantly, present a very basic framework for strategic implementation. Let's begin by thinking about why we need to think strategically. Strategy is best seen as the behavior in which an organization orients resources in order to achieve specific goals or objectives. Now, a number of organizations make the mistake of thinking that social media can solve all of their problems, that they're somehow magic bullets. Like anything else, of course they're not. And leveraging them without it making business sense is often a very common mistake. It's the Me Too syndrome. Our competitors have got a Twitter feed, for example, so we should have one too. But if it serves no business objective, then it's pointless having it. So rather than adopting a jumping on the bandwagon approach, we need to think about why are we going to go down a particular route? What do we want to get out of it? What are the key performance indicators going to be that it's a success or not? Is it a new way of doing business? Yes and no is the straightforward answer, if that makes sense. There are a number of differences in doing business through social media compared to more orthodox approaches. For example, it's conversational. It enables us to have what I call the many-to-many -many approach, uh, where we not just one person talking to lots of customers, but everyone's a contributor. We can talk to whole networks of key stakeholders, including our customers and suppliers. And so it's a much broader range of discussion and interaction. The tone is different. You know, traditional advertising, as a good example, it tends to engage in hype messaging. We put a message to a mass audience and hope that it will stick, resonate with a, a particular segment of them and that they'll therefore purchase a product or service, for instance. The tone of a social media style of business is very different. We have to get away from all of that hype because people can see through it and they can interact with us. They can talk to us and about us and with each other. So really, the things I pay off here are honesty, integrity, authenticity, and if we're fallible, being honest about that too. A third difference from a traditional way of doing business is reach. There are very few businesses that are unlimited in terms of their geography. But a social media business, theoretically at least, can be across borders and time zones. So spatially and temporally, its boundaries are reduced. Of course, it may be a social business aimed at promoting a particular physical product or service, in which case, well, distribution costs, for example, and all of the accompanying supply logistics probably will, in the reality, undermine our reach. But on the whole, at least in terms of our communications, the reach is unlimited and costs are substantially reduced as a consequence of that. It's different in terms of its validation. Marketing messages are not attended to by vast sectors of the audience. People see them as having low integrity. Uh, they typically do not trust what the advertisers are saying. Here, through a social media channel, people can interact not just with the brand itself, but with other brands and customers of brands. And so, the whole just buy a user conversation is much bro more broad, it's magnified to new sectors of the discussion, and what you get is a degree of, well, yeah, they provide good service. Oh, no, no, don't take any notice of that. This is my experience. So we have a chance as businesses to use social media conversations to validate what we're saying. 
And finally, it's a difference of control. We can get our message across when we want, to who we want. We can engage in target marketing in a far more systematic way through social media channels. And we have a much broader range of styles through which we can present that message, both tonal, technological, stylistical, and creatively. So we have control to a much larger extent. So in many respects, it's liberating and it is a different way of doing business. The last point I think on control is particularly important and please bear it in mind. It's the most fundamental change of all. But also remember that like every other characteristic I've outlined so far, our competitors have, and our critics have access to these things too. You know, all organizations, but particularly large multinational corporations, they have their critics, their dissenters. And so if you're an oil company, for example, your safety and pollution record can be targeted in a very systematic way by environmental campaigners. So remember, they can do what we can do, and don't forget that. There are also a number of similarities that remain between more traditional ways of doing business. Most businesses are not purely online, as I've said, they're a route to a goal, contacting a person or a customer. So we may have innovative ways of establishing contact, but most businesses still depend on the delivery of a product or service. If that can't be done online, then you know there is no advantage other than the marketing interaction. The relationship is not always an end to its, in itself. It's what I'm saying. So all of the online effort is only worthwhile if we still connect with somebody who wants, needs to do business with us. And what we need to do, therefore, is remember that social media are tools. They might be much more sophisticated. Um, they might be far much further reaching, give us greater deal of control, but they're still just tools. So just like a brochure, a TV commercial, a print ad, the channels we use need to have specific business objectives, just the same as any other medium through which we might to, wish to connect with our customers or key stakeholders. In terms of putting all this into practice, there are a number of potential models we could use, but I just want to briefly introduce a very, very basic framework. If this is your first experience of implementing social media within an organization, this is a pretty good starting point to ensure that you engage in the key activities involved. It's called the play model, and it's developed by Carvel and Taylor. Um, it has four key stages of a strategic implementation, and it's relatively straightforward to follow as a route map. Step one, plan. Step two, listen. Step three, analyze. And step four, engage. Just to flesh out those four stages, planning. This is about deciding what we want to achieve. What is the particular business objective that a new Twitter feed, for instance, is designed to solve? Is it to perhaps improve customer service if we're engaged in technical support of a product? That could be an example. Step two, listen. This is about understanding what's currently being said and who's saying it. So before attempting to introduce a Twitter feed to improve customer service, it would make sense to listen to the various channels of interest and find out what people currently think about our customer service. Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? What gaps do we need to fill? We need to understand what people currently think about our service if we're going to put the new channel to some kind of strategic use. Analyze. Once we've got all this information, determine what we've learned and who needs to know about this. 
If, for example, we're doing this technical support Twitter channel, we would want to, and we've learnt a lot about um, the types of shortfalls in service, the type of technical questions people want answers to, then the technical support team need to understand all this before we implement it. Otherwise, you can have people on the other end of the Twitter feed waiting to interact with customers who are the wrong, have the wrong technical capabilities. They don't have the information to hand to answer the types of questions that are likely to come up, and so on. All sorts of things could go wrong if all of the key internal stakeholders are not involved in this implementation strategy. Only when we've done all that do we plan the engagement. Okay, how are we going to actually run this channel on a day-to-day -day basis? I think a good starting point for something like a, a technical support Twitter feed is to have two types of response. If you have general questions that can be easily answered and that will save future inquiries from other users of the product, then an open Twitter field where people can post a question and get a mass response, i.e. a response that everyone looking at the Twitter channel can read. That's a great way forward. And that could not just be straightforward answer to a question, but it could be links to technical videos uploaded into YouTube. It could be a whole host of things. Online manuals, for instance, that type of link would be useful. If, however, the technical support involves, say, a customer with a particularly problematic product, perhaps something they're complaining about, then we need a, a strategy in place whereby we react to that type of customer by being sympathetic, polite, and diverting them to a more private channel to deal with the problem. So that could involve simple direct messaging within Twitter, which is kind of one-to-one -one communication. It could be say, having a policy in place where we say, okay, we think we can help you with that problem, don't worry, give us a contact number, we'll phone you and talk you through it. That type of thing. The engagement needs to be very carefully planned, just like everything else. So, in terms of strategic implementation, the play model gives us a nice starting point. Plan what we want to achieve, listen and learn from what people are currently saying, Analyze and share the data with all relevant stakeholders and then have an engagement strategy in place for how we'll deal with the different types of communication that we're likely to encounter. So, in what the presentation I've called the why of social media, it's about why we need to be strategic. We need to be strategic in order to make sure that we're not just a launching a channel without a clear business purpose. It needs to make use of the new way of doing business. It needs to be more conversational, more honest, and make use of the broader reach possible. And through play, we at least have a very basic framework to get us to start thinking about all of these things in a more strategic manner. Thank you.